Hi everyone, I thought I'd just do a video on something you don't really see on YouTube, well not from what I've seen anyway, and it is a Mega Drive 2, which is no big whoop there, but what you don't normally see is the fact that it's overclocked. Now, whenever you search for Mega Drive overclock or anything like that on YouTube, you end up just finding videos of people overclocking Mega Drive 1s. There's one video, well there was a video of a guy I took showing that he'd overclocked using this with a 10 megahertz crystal pack on top um, and said that it worked but then when I searched for it yesterday to follow it, well even look at it, he's taking it off YouTube so there's no videos now showing overclock Mega Drive. So one other is a video done in the 90s of some game... Uh, computer game TV show in America, I can't remember what it's called, um, and it shows a, a guy, geeky dude, say, explaining how to overclock a Genesis 2 using the cartridge slot, clock speeds, and big long wires going to the um, processor under here. And they, the thing is, I, I don't know, I haven't been convinced that that would work. You don't see any videos of people overclocking. When you do Google searches, people just say, "Oh yeah, follow, just pinch the the crystal, uh, the speed line off the cartridge." But nobody shows examples of doing it, so I don't think it'll work. Uh, and the dude on the video doesn't even get it to work. And the Mega Drive that he shows overclocked is a Mega Drive One, so it's not. I don't think that's the way to go. So what I've done instead is used the Mega Drive 1 overclock from Damo Monsters videos which is a 10 megahertz crystal on a little bit of Vero board on here really really short wires going to pin 15 on the processor and get in where is it this is my plus 5 of this capacitor here and I've got ground coming off uh, this capacitor that's back here you can't really see because of the shadowing and here's my double pole double throw switch that leads to a, a two colour LED. So this this Mega Drive looks a bit of a mess as well because it was a Neptune which didn't work because the 32X was bust. Uh, it had no cartridge slot earlier or anything so I've had rebuilt it completely. Um, hence why there's weird wiring on the AV port because it's upside down from when I did the Neptune. So here are just some dodgy switches. I mean, it's all mounted with tape because I've just been testing it. But this is the language switch, and this is 50 and 60 hertz. So one problem I've found is videoing. This is a phone. I can't really mount it while I go and collect coins on Sonic. So you may end up staring at the wall or something for a little while while I try to get the coins. But here we go, so this is what happens at the minute, it's set to standard, uh, 7 MHz, the blue wire is, is 10, the green is 7, so I've switched over to 7 at the minute, so I power it on, my little green light comes on here, and I've got a light here because it seems that you need something to complete this circuit for it to power on, as far as I can tell, so I'll be hot gluing that one into place. So here we go, here's Sonic, Sonic 2, the the benchmark for overclocking it seems. Mystic Cave. Right, let's see if we can Ah, if that will stay, at least you've got something to look at. So in 7 megahertz, Sonic feels a bit sluggish to get going anyway. Um, and when you collect I think it's over 50 coins. Um, you get real slow down. So if I can just get 50 without getting hit, uh, I'll be able to show you the differences. <coughs> oh crap. That's not oh yeah, okay, I can still probably do it. Probably not now. <laughs> ah, 
30 coins, that might do it. Let's see. Here we go, here comes the lightning bug. Let's see what happens when he gets hit. Oh, don't let him do it. Come here, you. Right, he'll come for Sonic in a sec, hopefully. Come on. Is he going to make it? Oh, next time. There you go, you see him slow down and all the coins went to that. Right, thank goodness for that. Okay, power off. Right, hopefully I've edited it this right. Okay, this is going to be overclocked. See, so light goes red. We boot up. Managed to do it. Here we go, here's Sonic, here's the glow bug. And that wasn't it seemed like the might no no. That was overclocked, so there wasn't much there wasn't any slowdown or much. Ah oh, actually, I don't think there was because I was watching my camera rather than <laughs> rather than the TV. Okay, so that's it in overclock mode. Let's see if I turn it around without crashing it. Let's get some light in. So you can see there, it's a bit of a dark mass, but it's only a little pack. I've got to hot glue gun this all in. Um, but yeah, it is possible to overclock um, your Mega Drive 2. And really, I'd recommend going to Damo Monsters videos for the guide because that's what I've used for both Mega Drive 1 and now this one and it works a treat so yeah don't be too scared of lifting the pin on the motherboard and turn him off you just need to be really careful heat the leg and use a, a thin pick and you'll be able to wee wee get wheedle it out and not hopefully not lift the solder pad underneath so you solder um, it's this green wire to the solder pad, which is your 7 megahertz. This uh, orange one is to pin 15, and then the blue one is out of the 10 megahertz crystal. So then, that's your your circuit there. Um, and that's really it. It's possible to overclock your Mega Drive 2. You've just got to have the nerve to lift up that that leg it's easier to do on a Mega Drive one because the legs are so much bigger but if you use a pick tool take your time you can do it so there you go that's pretty much fully modded I'm not going to bother with doing the clear or clear crystal audio thing I haven't noticed much difference on the YouTube videos and I can't follow those wiring guides anyway so that's about the limit for this Mega Drive but there you go it's overclocked that's not not many of them are overclocked so give it a go Go to Damo Monsters videos and you'll be laughing. Thank you.